Hey everybody, welcome back. World War II submarine history with Haiku. And our briefing topic today, U-boat maneuverability. Um, I picked this topic because I came across a tweet on Twitter, somebody from the World of Warships community um, questioning the maneuverability of the U-boats that they're currently testing it in game. And I thought, um, yeah, that's kind of interesting. That's information that you usually don't come across in books. I wonder what's out there and uh, if we can get to the bottom of this. So let's go. Okay, our references for today. We're going to be using um, U-boat telegraph commands on some of these tables. And uh, I'm presenting that information here along with the English equivalents just to kind of, we'll, we'll be using the, um, the German uh, initials, uh, just say space on the tables and stuff. All right, and then uh, we're gonna be looking at the Type 7 C U-boat today. Uh, some basic dimensional information about the Type 7 C. And then basic information on engine performance and speed. And uh, notice that at slow speed on the surface, we can expect to make 7.2 knots at 180 RPMs. Um, submerged at slow speed, uh, we can expect to make 1.5 knots at 55 RPMs with the E-motors. Uh, compared to at flank speed, uh, 471 RPMs on the diesels, producing 17.7 knots and then 285 RPM on the E-motor, producing eight knots, submerged. So how do we judge maneuverability? Um, after construction of a U-boat, sea trials are performed to determine if that particular boat that was just built uh, meets the required operational specifications that the, uh, the Navy has established for that boat class. So, these sea trials, you know, if a boat can't meet these benchmarks, you know, it's got to go back to the shipyard and, you know, they got to do whatever they need to do to fix it before they proceed on to further testing. Um, now, as part of the sea trials, they're doing many things during the sea trials, but as part of these sea trials, turning maneuvers are done to, and that's done to determine how much distance is required to turn the boat 90 and 180 degrees. Now, I didn't, I wasn't able to find information on uh, sea trials in warships, like how they're done and stuff. It's, and, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure why, but that information is, it's just generally not out there. But there is a lot of information out there on uh, sea trials as it pertains to modern merchant ships. And the turning diameter for a ship is equal to three to four times the length between particulars. We'll get on to that in a second. Just, just hold on to that thought. Okay, so factors affecting maneuverability. It's gonna be the length of the boat, uh, whether you have one or two rudders, and then the size and the shape of those rudders. Um, I probably should have put on there speed as well. Um, that is a factor, and you will see how speed influences um, maneuverability. So that one's on me. And you know, the funny thing is, I could just stop the recording, go back and put the word speed in there, but it's just like, I've recorded this so many times, I just don't feel like it. Okay, um, this is the turning test that would be done. You have your boat, it's say it's moving north, um, rudder amidship, a command is given, the rudder's turned over to the maximum angle, and then we start making measurements as the boat begins a 360 degree turn. And you'll notice that when it completes that 360 degree turn, it's actually not on the same path it was when we originally started the test. So you're so really what they have to do they have to throw the rudder over, they have to complete a 360 degree turn, and then at that point, they begin another 360 degree turn, and that's where they make the measurements. Um, 
So you have the tactical diameter, which is like that first 300, that distance for that first 360 degree turn. Uh, and then once the boat settles in on its final uh, circular course, we do another measurement then to determine the turning diameter. The tactical diameter is important because that gives us information with regards to distance and time that it takes to turn 180 degrees, which we would want to know, say, like in combat, that we can get out of trouble as fast as we got into it. Okay, so earlier we talked about this thing, the length between uh, perpendiculars, excuse me. Um, the LPP is shorter than the length overall, but it's not significantly shorter. So for our briefing today, we're just going to use the length overall for the briefing, um, mostly because I can't find the information actually to calculate the LPP. I would probably need like scale drawings and stuff and do some takeoff, but it's close enough for government work. Now, um, now if our if our turning diameter is equal to between three and four times the length of the bow, we can actually do that calculation and predict what the turning diameter should be. And I've done that here. And uh, we're predicting right now that the turning diameter for the Type 7C is going to be between 200 and 270 meters at maximum speed. And sure enough, um, this is actual data that was collected on the Type 7C U-boat uh, back from World War II. And as you can see here, at flank speed with the rudder all the way over to 32 degrees, our turning diameter is actually 270 meters. So it's within that range of three to four. So we can say, so we can be satisfied that our calculation is actually representative. And then the other thing to notice as you decrease for a given rudder angle, as you decrease decrease speed, your turning diameter does go down. Conversely, as we reduce our rudder angle, our turning diameter goes up. So these are all things that we're balancing uh, while we're at sea and maneuvering. So this is surfaced. Now, this is submerged. Um, but you know what? It's not too different. At flank speed in a 32 degree rudder, um, our turning diameter is 280 meters, and that's at like eight knots underwater, whereas the 270 on the surface was would be at like 17.7 knots. But like with being running on the surface, you'll see that um, as we reduce speed, we reduce our turning diameter. And as we decrease our rudder angle, we increase. And I think really that first line at 32 degrees, that, that's probably what the most important information is for the U-boat commander. Um, because he's probably going to be doing most of his manu emergency maneuvering underwater while he's being attacked. And he is going to need this information to help him decide how to maneuver um, in order to evade uh, detection and depth charges. And like I think I said that before, but this is submerged. Yeah. Okay. So let's do a, let's do a comparison here. Um, as, as I just showed you, the turning diameter for the Type 7C underwater eight knots is uh, 280 meters. And we have two rudders on the boat. And that turning diameter ratio is 4.2. Now that compares to the Buckley class destroyer escort, which at 23 knots can, has a turning diameter of 300 meters. <clears throat> and that's with two rudders on the boat. So it's turning diameter, turning diameter ratio is 3.2. So it's actually better than the U-boat. And this is something that uh, Donuts was critical about the type sevens that with one rudder, they just didn't have the maneuverability because he understood that uh, it's important for the U-boat to be able to outturn whoever's chasing it uh, in order to uh, evade successfully. So, going back to our last slide, you know, if as as we reduce our 
our speed underwater, we actually significantly can cut down our turning diameter. Uh, and that's something that a captain would take into consideration while they're underwater and uh, evading. And then as a comparison there, I actually have the turning uh, diameter for the Type 7A. And you can see that it's 360 meters. Um, so adding that second rudder to, to the 7C was, was, actually, was actually a pretty big deal. You wouldn't think it is, but, but it is. And I thought it was interesting to compare this to, to something like the Gneisenau, where at 27.2 knots, uh, it has a turning diameter of 667 meters. And its turning diameter ratio is actually 2.9. So it's a, it's a pretty maneuverable boat, I think. Much more maneuverable than the Fletcher class DD. Uh, as you can see there at 30 knots, its turning diameter is 695 meters, which is terrible. But it does only have one rudder. And um, that's confirmed by the turning diameter ratio, which is, which is 6.1. So it supports the idea that the destroyer escorts were a really important addition to the Allied ASW effort um, because they had the maneuverability to stay on top of those U-boats where something like a larger destroyer with a single rudder, you know, it would you would just be constantly out turning it and being and being able to get into a favorable position to evade. Okay, and then one other thing we'll talk about here is the crash dive rate. Um, in general, there are a lot of factors that affect dive rate. Uh, crash dives in particular, they were executed at an angle of approximately 10 degrees and maximum engine RPM. And they, their initial dive angle was 10, was actually was between eight, I think eight and 12 degrees. We're using an average of 10 degrees, okay. But in, and you think that that doesn't seem like it's very a very steep angle. It's not, but there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is that you don't want the stern of the boat coming up above the, uh, the height of the conning tower <clears throat> as you're diving. Um, because if you don't watch that angle, you, you could actually bring the stern out of the water, in which case you're going to stall the boat. Which would make for a really bad day, especially if you're, you know, especially if you have a, a PBY bearing down on you, you know, loaded loaded for bear. Um, so the time to get to, so the goal was to get the submarine to 10 meters fully submerged in about 30 seconds, uh, and that's a vertical descent rate of, of about 0 0.33 meters per second. Uh, you would continue the boat at 10 degrees until you hit 20 meters. Uh, and then the, you would tip the boat down to 15 or 30 degrees and continue down to your crash dive depth, which is like 80 meters. Now that, <clears throat> that dive time, 30 seconds, that, that is variable. So for like the type nine, which is a big, which is a physically bigger boat, the, I want to say the standard was like 35 seconds for the type seven standard was 30 seconds and for like the type 2 the standard was 25 seconds but like i said there were there were a lot of variables that affected that number and you could reduce that number you know if you had if you had a if you had a veteran crew that really knew what they were doing and really worked well together that saves you time during the dive uh, you could be on the surface with your dive planes preset and some of your ballast tanks partially flooded. That would save you, you know, I think what I've read that would doing those two things could save you like eight to 10 seconds <clears throat> in the, in the dive process. Um, but you probably wouldn't, but you probably wouldn't be in that condition on the surface all the time, simply because carrying water in your ballast tanks when you don't have to is, is going to reduce your fuel efficiency. But, you know, if you were someplace and you were expect, definitely expecting contact, you could definitely um, preset your boat so that you could get that dive time reduced. And uh, they could, for those type 7 Cs, they could get it down to 20 seconds, you know, which is pretty quick, I think. Okay, and so <laughs> we've gone over this stuff. So let's kind of circle back and let's wrap up. Um, here is information on the 
U-69, which is a Tier 6 submarine in World of Warships. And um, let's look at the let's look at the uh, performance parameters for this U-boat as it's modeled in game. Uh, we have a maximum surface speed of 25 knots, so that's artificially high because ours in real life is 17.7. Here they state the turning circle radius of 470 meters. Radius, 470 meters. So that's that's massive. Um, I think what did what did we what did I show you? I showed you a turning diameter of 270 meters at maximum speed. So 270 divided by two, 100. So really, in real life, your turning radius for a Type 7 CU boat, which is what this is um, in Game and World of Warships, your turning radius, real life, is actually 135 meters, and they're modeling it at 470 meters. Um, I don't. I wasn't able to get information, find information on rudder shift time, so I'm not going to comment on that. Uh, maximum submerge speed, they're showing 15 knots, um, when in real life we could only do 8 knots. Um, I don't have information on dive plane shift time, but here they show the maximum dive and ascent speed as 2.7 meters per second. So that's like, that's like way artificially high. So so why is it like this um i asked around because this question comes up all the time on the world of worships forums when um you know people comment like that either main battery guns the shells visually they're traveling faster or slower than you know what you expect and stuff and uh so what i think it is is that you know um world of worships there's like a time and scale compression involved and um I think they just adjust some of these numbers to make things playable. Like, I think that if, I think that if ships had, I think that if they used real data, like 135 meters for the U-69, that boat would just be whipping around so fast. I don't, I don't know that you could ever hit it. And, you know, I'm not sure that it, things moving that fast and stuff around the screen, you know, I'm not. I'm not really sure that it wouldn't like be just uncomfortable on the eyes and stuff, but you know, it's World of Warships. It's not a simulator. It's an arcade game, but um, for all their faults, um, you know, it's nice that they do the product that they do because it's just another way to make an, make a connection to naval history, and you know, that's never a bad thing. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Um, you can email me. I am on Twitter, I am on Discord, and I do have a Patreon. Everybody, have a great day, and we'll see you for the next briefing.